Over the course of the next three videos, we'll make this patch together. I think this is a great learning patch because it uses all free modules and has lots of common patching techniques that you can adapt for future use. In this video, we'll set up the sequencers, mixer, and kit. We'll talk about every module, what they do, how to patch them, and how you can modify it. You can download the complete patch for free at the patch storage link in the description if you'd rather not put it together yourself. The modules we're using in this patch are from the following sets that you see on screen now. To add modules to your personal VCV rack, you'll navigate to the VCV rack plugins page, make sure you're logged in, and then click add all or subscribe by the names of these module makers. Then when you open up VCV rack on your computer, log in and you'll see this little red dot here. Just click update all and it will download all the modules for you. Let's set up the clock and sequencers first. The clock is what progresses our patch and keeps everything synced up. I chose clocked by impromptu because it has three separate clock outputs that can adjust divisions and multiplications independently. I also really like the structure. We've got the run and reset buttons over here on the left and the main tempo knob here on top. Next, we have two sequencers. Let's grab the 16 step and its expander by Count Modula. The expander is super useful because it adds another channel to this sequencer. No cables required, they just need to be in proximity. Really snazzy. Let's start by connecting the reset output from the clock to the reset input of the sequencers here. That way we can start them over by clicking this button. It also allows us to sync up multiple sequencers in the future. Next we'll send a times four clock to the clock input here. By turning this knob up until it reads times four, and then pulling a cable from the associated port to the clock input. Our sequencer will now run at four times the BPM, so every step is a 16th note. I'm gonna crank the tempo knob here up to 169 BPM. Nice. Now if the run button is lit, we see the module progressing. Very good job so far. Now we have our mixer set up. This is how we're gonna hear everything and adjust the levels. I chose the Mix 4 and the Mix 4X by Bogue Audio. The Mix 4 allows us to change the volume of channels and pan sounds. And the Mix 4X gives us access to EQ and send effects. These are similar to our sequencer modules, where if they're just in proximity, they automatically connect, no cables needed. And you'll find that many modules in VCV Rack can behave this way. Let's patch in a reverb. Choose any that you like. I went with Plateau by Valley because it's the best one. We'll connect it to the send A output and input like this. Crank the level all the way up here and put the wet on max and the dry on min on the reverb module. When using send effects, you want only wet signal. If we mix in more dry signal, it can muddy it up because we're gonna essentially hear the dry signal twice. It can sometimes cause some phasing and things like that too. Now, if we turn these knobs here, we'll add reverb to that specific channel. Let's patch the outputs from the mixer to the stock audio module and the record module. On the audio module, click on this little window here and select your audio device. For me, that's headphones. The record module allows us to record either audio files or video files. That's how I make these videos and you can record your jams this way. Now we have the sequencers and the mixer all set up and we're ready to trigger our kit and accept the sound outputs respectively. You've done a great job so far. I'm proud of you. Now let's slam that kit together, baby. Bring up the Trummer 2 drum synth by Volt and the snare drum by Hora. We'll also have a sample and hold and crossfader by Bogue Audio and the stock voltage controlled amplifier and scope. The scope isn't necessary, but it's fun to see the sounds that we make. These six modules are all the ones we'll use to make the complete three voice kit. The Trummer 2 drum synth is a kick-ass module with a lot of percussive flexibility. It has an oscillator section and a noise section, and you can get a combined output from this port here. But today we're using the oscillator section to make our kick and the noise section to make our hi-hat. So we use the individual inputs and outputs located here instead. We'll use the gate output from the first 16 step channel for the kick pattern and the trigger output from the second channel for the hi-hat. So let's plug those cables in now like this. We'll route the audio from the kick first to the scope, and then the output from the scope goes to the first channel of the mixer. 
The hi-hat firstly goes to the crossfader. Either of the inputs work. I'll choose B. And then the crossfader's output goes to the second scope input, and the output heads to the second channel of the mixer. We use this crossfader to combine the signal from the snare and hi-hat into one cable in just a second. While we're here, let's change the crossfader's function. We'll turn it all the way right. That way both signals are at max volume when this knob is in the middle. Let's get this snare going too. We'll use the trigger output from the 16-step sequencer's first channel, so plug that cable in now like this. To clarify, we have the kick on the gate output and the snare on the trigger output, but they both utilize the same sequencer channel. The output from the snare will go to the input of the voltage-controlled amplifier, and the VCA output goes to the other channel of our crossfader. In my case, that's channel A. Let's set the sample and hold to intake values from these knobs and feed that to the VCA. We'll connect this output to the input of the sample and hold, and connect the trigger output from the sequencer to the trigger input of the sample and hold. Now the sample and hold locks in the knob value every time there's a trigger. Also, every time there's a trigger, a snare plays. Let's put the sample and hold's output to our VCA's control voltage input, and now we should hear a snare when these knobs are turned up. Now we've got most of the cables attached, and we're all set to start hearing some sounds. I went for a punchy kick by utilizing a short attack and hold, and a medium decay. The tune knob adjusts the pitch, and I dropped it a bit. Bend and time are related knobs that adjust the drop or climb of the tone. By turning the bend knob right, we set the pitch to drop, and the time knob sets how quickly that drop runs. I went with a short drop time, which gives the kick some oomph. Oscillator 2, Wave, and Shaper affect the timbre, and I highly recommend messing with these to your own personal tastes. Here are the settings that I chose, and here's how my kick sounds. Next we have the hi-hat sound. Again, for our envelope section here, we want a very short attack and hold, and a still short but not as short decay. For the filter section, I brought the cutoff all the way up because it's set to low pass filter by default, and we want the high frequencies from the hi-hat to shine. I brought the resonance almost halfway, this brightens the hits a bit. The tone knob adjusts the pitch of the hat, and the pitch and res comb knobs are related and set up a comb filter. I'm not using the comb filter in my hi-hat, so I just left them in the default positions. But if you turn them up, you'll get a robotic sound like this. Here's how my hat sounds. Now for the snare. A snare sound is two layered sounds, usually an oscillator and noise. The tone knob here adjusts the snare's pitch. And the decay will set how long that pitch is played. The pitch decay section here sets the pitch drop, similar to the pitch drop of our kick. This knob adds or removes noise from our snare, and this knob determines how quickly the noise fades. I went with a slappy snare, and I'd like to encourage you to make one that you like the sound of. Here's mine. If we start turning these on while the clock is running, we'll begin to hear our sounds being sequenced. I'm going for a drum and bass rhythm. The iconic style for DNB is kicks on 1 and 11, and snares on 5 and 13. Remember the snares and kicks are being triggered by the same sequencer. We just have the kick on the gate output, and the snare on the trigger output. We can't hear the snare. Why is that? Please choose an answer from the following. It's because the VCA isn't opening. I'll turn up the knobs associated with steps 5 and 13. And there we go. Our snare's hitting, and you're doing great. Now we can add several more snare hits as ghost hits, which are quiet ones around the main hit. I'm going to set triggers for all of the steps 8 through 12, and adjust the knobs to low values, below about half a volt. Here's how that sounds. We can see the VCA opening at different values based on the position of the knobs on the sequencer. We call this step-specific amplitude control, and it rocks. 
Lastly, we have the hi-hat, which is the easiest. I went for a simple pattern, it hits on every step, and since we have the times four clock running, it hits on 16th notes. If you wanted eighth notes, you just set the triggers on every other step. Experiment with different patterns if you want a different feel. Let's have a look at the mixer and EQ. We have the kick drum on channel one, and the snare and hi-hat mixed on channel two. I left the faders at zero positions, and I'm controlling the volume with the dedicated volume knobs on each of the modules. This is my personal preference. If you'd rather use the faders, please do so. Dial the EQ to your personal taste as well. I like to raise the mids on the kicks to give it a gritty sound. But you might want to boost the lows and cut the highs. For the hat and snare, I'm going to increase the highs a tad and add a bit of reverb from our send effect that we patched in earlier. Remember to do that by turning this little knob here. Listen to that, that's a kit. We'll go over the bass in the next one and it sounds like this. All of the content I make, including my sample packs and the VCV Rack Cheat Sheet, are free, forever, for everyone, on my Kofi page. I have several new Kofi supporters that I'd like to shout out. DJ Peebs is a new supporter added to the list. Thank you so much for your support, DJ Peebs. You rock, dude. If you have a show coming up, let us know about it in the comments. Pam Demonia is the newest monthly supporter. Thank you so much, Pam Demonia, for your support. You chose an awesome nickname, and I'm so glad that you enjoy the content. Take Two also showed generous support. Thank you so much, Take Two. I really appreciate your kindness and generosity. You rock. Huge shout out to my other supporters as well. Your names will always be on my webpage and on the dedication page of the VCV Rec Cheat Sheet. I hope you all have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.